Mason. Yeah. You want to hear a story? I don't know. Is it funny? No. Yeah, let's hear it then. <laughs> um, when I was with the window indoor company, we got sent out to take care of a pivot door from one of the manufacturers that uh, builds all these doors out here in the wild, wild west. Um, and the deadbolt was not working on it. It's a commercial deadbolt for this door. Uh, we're being told that it's just sticking. It won't engage, having a lot of issues with it. So this is when, like, still early on, didn't know much, like, about what I'm supposed to be doing or how to do things, right? So the sales guy's like, oh, yeah, it should be a pretty easy fix. You just go out there, do X, Y, and Z, and you're good. I'm like, okay. <laughs> So we go out there, we're looking at this door, and we're like, I don't know how to fix this stupid thing. Lock's a lock, like, isn't it self-contained and you can't do anything to it? So uh, me and my friend Forrest, we end up working on it for, I think, a little over an hour, and we start, like, figuring out how this thing all works and uh, certain screws that hold it in place in the right position excuse me, all that good stuff. So um, finally we figure it out. We get it dialed in. Everything's good. I'm like, all right, cool. Like we walked away from that one just being like happy we figured it out. Newfound understanding for what we were doing. Next day we get called up to Cave Creek uh, because there's these people that are having an issue with their door. It won't lock um, and just they want to get it taken care of. So I go up to the door it's the same kind of door as the day before. So it literally, like, I'm, it took me like, I feel like less than five minutes to just take care of it. Like the people had probably walked away for two minutes, dialed it in, tightened it down exactly where it needed to be just because it's one of those things that if it's off by like an eighth of an inch, you could be screwed, so you, you just gotta get in the right position, cinch down the screws, make sure everything's set. So I come up to the lady, I'm like, all right, I'm done, your door's good to go. She's like, what? I'm like, yeah, so I walk her through the whole process of what I did just to let her know like, hey, like, I'm not an idiot, I'm not trying to fool you or anything, and then I'm like, is there anything else in the house? She's like, well, I've got these other door handles that are interior doors, and our company only dealt with exterior doors, so, but, I was looking at them and it's like, it's only a couple set screws. So I'm like, yeah, sure. No worries. Like just trying to make sure like they know that we're taking care of them, not just there to get in there. We made it functional for right now. So goodbye. And then leave. But to me, it was hilarious being like, okay, over an hour for the first one. And the next day it's like under five minutes and goodbye. So good times with uh, learning how to do our jobs. The beauty in simplicity. Yep. Because a lot of people like to overthink things. Yeah. Like a similar instance. Uh, doing a house out in PV. And we get a call. And this is just after you had left. This is when I was on my own. Where uh, some other people had been out, already looked at the door. And they tried to play with it themselves. They drilled some holes. They made some things bigger than they ought to have been. And they tried replacing screws. Eventually they couldn't get it. So I end up out there to try to figure out what's going on. I go do my thing. Meet the owner, shake hands, go to the door, look at what the other people had done. Everything looks real suspicious. Open the door. Everything works great. Pull the door closed. Nothing works. How is it possible that it works when it's open, but not when it's closed? Oh, something's in the way. Go down to the bottom of the door. There's a rock behind the weather strip. Take the rock out, put it in my hand, close the door, works fine, locks. Is being stopped like an eighth of an inch short because of this rock <laughs> that barely fit in the palm of my hand. So I go drop into the homeowner's hand and say, hey, we're good to go. <laughs> you didn't even take a tool out of your backpack. Didn't need to. You had a rock in your door. That was it? Absolutely. Anyways, is there anything else you need from me? No, I, we're, we're good. Okay, have a good day. Off to the next one. <laughs> I always love the ones where um, it's the doors from, and I say it this way because, well, I guess they don't care. It's Western. The way that we described those doors was the doors that are built in the wild, wild west, because um, it's close enough to their name. You're wearing their hat. Yeah, that's true. 
Um, really like Western, by the way. They're, they're some of my favorite Illuminadors. Um, but on some of their hinge doors, and this goes for a lot of manufacturers, you have the, it's called, it. I call it the plunger that latches in the door frame, right? It hits that strike, catches, so that's what holds your door closed when you close it. Uh, some of these doors on the higher end doors will have the typical one and then they'll have an additional one that is, when it's pressed in, allows you to engage what's called a multi-point. So it's going to allow for extra hardware to go into the frame for more security, hold that door straight over time, things of that nature. So it's either going to go into the door jam, um, just to the side of it, or it's going to go into the top and bottom. Uh, sometimes though, for whatever reason in manufacturing or in installation, sometimes those pieces can be backwards. Uh, and for some of the manufacturers, all you have to do is kind of pull it out, flip it 180, and it goes right back in. But it's hilarious where people are like, hey, I can't get my doors to close. And then you just come, pull it out, flip it, you're good to go. I just did that, what was it, Tuesday or Wednesday? Really? The doors had been installed with the keepers that pushed that part of the door in for nine years. Okay. Because people couldn't figure it out. Same exact scenario. <laughs> <laughs> and all you had to do was flip it over. Yeah, and I showed the builder and he was like... Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, I've always wondered why those were in there. And I took one out one day, and I saw those backwards. And uh, I was like, yeah, that's all it is. It's like, oh, my God. And this guy's only been on the house for, like, a couple of months. But, like, this, these people have been living in this house for nine years. Oh, my gosh. And, uh, classic. That's hilarious. Speaking of that, you still got to come fix my door. What's wrong with your door? It's the door in the garage that leads to the side yard. Mm. It's just... Too it, tight. It yeah, we talked about that the, before. It touches at the top. Yeah, we were supposed to do that the 29th, and I was going to let you know that... Um, You're not going to do it now? Uh, we're just going to postpone you. Just loosen some screws on the top hinge, dude. Should I have told them that? No, I have. So they don't have... They're all the same length little mini screws. There's no, like, long screw or yeah. anything like that. Yeah, we talked about that before. Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. What the fuck? Was he here? Or no? Probably. Yeah. Physic was. Physically. Yeah, probably physically, yeah. <laughs> I got ADHD. Why are you postponing me, dude? Uh, because there's a guy with baseboard that needs to be installed on a tighter time frame than uh, your job needs to happen. What do you mean? I scheduled first. That's true. Is this what Saito does? Yeah, we do. Okay. To, to the people who are very understanding and are nice to us, they allow us to postpone things if need be. Mm-hmm. Give us your physical address right now on camera so I can go there and fix it. Yeah, we'll just... Yeah. We'll go there right now. Fine, fuck it. We'll go. I do have guns now and security. Guns, plural, or just one? Come find out. <laughs> <laughs> that means just one. One round at a time. <laughs> call me out like that. It's one. We're going to have to go to the gun store, bulk up this arsenal now that it's on the internet. That Yeah, we'll have to get... Uh, you need... What are the... What are the guns that they're about to outlaw that they should have never allowed people to buy? The fucking automatic ones? That automatic's been outlawed for a while. No. What are you talking about? ARs? No, not ARs. I don't know. I'm talking about, oh, you're talking about... Um, he doesn't like rifles, dude. It's the... It's, tech, it's like the uh, AR pistols and AK pistols, the short barrel rifles that are like handguns. Dumb. I hate that. Let us have fun. No one's using these for crimes. Oh. And the people who are, they don't care. Look, yeah. our camera's tilted. Semi-automatic oh, right guns. On. Yeah, yeah, those are cool. Assault rifles. Yeah, those are cool. Get them now before they're gone. Exactly. Yeah, that's why we, that's why we do that. AR-15. There's no point for a normal human to have that. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. What? You can shoot all kinds Second of stuff. Second Amendment said... And our rights are God-given rights it from the harder. Lord above. I feel like it should be harder to get a gun. Why? How hard should it be to get a gun? I don't know. I got one in under an hour. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. That means you got a clean background, though. That yeah. means the FBI said you're good. Do you trust the FBI? <laughs> he doesn't trust but for what Shit, Now we're for flagged. For what reasons? Why'd you, have yeah. to, why'd you say that? You're, this is your first flag? Oh, <laughs> you're, you're talking about Minecraft. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's an FBI agent out there. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> He's a magic word. Hey, these are pretty good. I know, right? Heavenly hunks from uh, Costco. 
Well, they should have a picture of you on the back. They should. There's yeah. some random dork on the back of here. Does that guy look familiar Prob to you at all? Probably founded the company or something, but... No. Let's see if it's a bio. If it, it's does, a it does say share the love. Yeah. Where can they find these? Costco. What are they? Good. Um, Heavenly hunks. I know. Ridiculously but amazing organic oatmeal dark chocolate snacks. Refrigerate after opening. Yeah, I've never done that. Mm. I don't Just know why you would. Throw them in the pantry, eat them in two days, you're fine. Oh, that's not bad. No. Usually it's like, oh, this is only 120 calories. No. But yet, like, the bag has, like, 90 servings in it. Yeah. <laughs> you eat the whole bag. I love when there's stuff that's, like, only eat half of it and that's a serving. And you're like, you know very well that no one is doing that. They're going to eat, like, four. And so it's going to go from, like, oh, hey, it's only 100 calories. You know no. who does that pisses me off? Fucking ramen soup. A half a block is 170 calories. <laughs> Who the fuck eats half a block? I get two bags minimum. Does that make us bad people or hungry? Uh, probably hungry. Amer fat American people? Mm. I don't know. About I don't think anyone qualifies as fat here, though. In this very room, at least. I don't know, dude. I got a big belly. But you do sports and stuff, yeah? Yeah. yeah I think it's genetic. It's just, it carries only in my belly. Mm. My belly. I don't know why. My stomach. Perma pregnant. No, not that bad. It's like an ugly fat belly. Dad bod. Do you have those bitch tits yet? No, oh, fuck no. Still rocking that chest? Semi. Semi. Kind of like Joe right now. Yeah. Right there in the middle. There's chest hair to compensate. Do you have a lot? Of... No, you're like me. You got. You don't look like you have a lot of hair. I got some chest hair. Well, I know. It actually like, meets my happy we, trail. We can I just like go. It. Look at that. Like, he has to shave on the daily. Yeah. Like you shaved this morning, didn't you? Yeah, absolutely. No, did not. You ever just get weird in hair? What, that hair in weird places? Do you think I don't know, like on my arm up here for some dumb reason? I feel kind of Italian, you know? Yeah, Italian. Italian. I I started knowing I was getting old when uh, the hair starts like creeping over your back, and you're just like, no, <laughs> God, no. <laughs> yeah, over the shoulders. It's <laughs> crest of the hill, dude. Yep. And you're just like, it's all downhill from all here, figuratively off. and yeah. literally, yep. And you're just like, oh my gosh, I gotta get married and just be like, I'm sorry, babe, you married a You don't have to Sasquatch. get married. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, uh, we met with this guy who's officiating our wedding. He's... Why don't you let Joe do it? Because my fiance wants her former youth leader to do the ceremony. Okay, that's fair. But I don't think I'm qualified. We could just get you ordained you get your, online. You get you qualified in like 15 minutes, on me. Well, I need. I can be an ordained minute. We need to do that. I had okay. How much does it cost? Things, I forget. Uh, do I actually have to read the Bible? No, you could. You just make up what organization you're part of. Anyways, oh, yeah. I was coaching uh, high school pole vaulting several years ago, and uh, it was hilarious. We're getting ready to start practice and one of the kids comes up he's like hey coach he's like 16 17 years old he's like guess what i just got ordained so whenever you get married i got you covered i'm like what the how did you get ordained and he just walks me through it and i'm just like oh my gosh but anyways we're meeting with this guy who's going to be officiating does he have a name yeah he does i put it out there whatever um I have a sense that he doesn't like this guy. <laughs> the people that I don't know, I don't trust, like, right off the bat. And this is just for anyone. So this is not that guy. So if for some reason he hears about this, like, I just don't know you. That's it. Anyways. Um, so he's uh, we're walking through, like, hey, the ceremony is going to go like this, this, like, and this. And he's like, uh, I just want to let you guys know. Day of the wedding, like a couple minutes before we start, I'm gonna come up to each of you individually and be like, "Hey, are you sure you want to do this?" They do do that. Yeah. Well, like, and in my mind, like, that's the first time I'm hearing about this, other than in that conversation, because my immediate thought was like, "Fuck off!" Like, I don't want anyone doing that to me on my wedding. You're gonna tell a man of God to fuck off? No, because 
my fiance and if she'd be wife by the time she found out about it would be past. Do you guys have to take a class? We did premarital counseling. Just mm-hmm. graduated last week. How long was it? Eight weeks or yeah. something like that. I feel like Maybe I should have got that. that. I should have had that done. Mine was like an hour thing at his house. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah. How many of the questions were sexually related? I want different answers from both of you. Uh, we were already living together and having sex. No, no, no. The oh. questions that the guy asked. Part of the counseling. Oh, I have no idea, dude. You were paying attention? Ago. Dude, it was 10 years ago. You don't remember a conversation Ele- about sex? Almost without... 11 years ago. Not in one question. You don't remember? No. Damn. You didn't ask me about positions or anything like that. So, we had... I really hope Kendra doesn't listen to this. Don't get too into it if you're not if you're that worried. <laughs> uh, we've already talked about this together personally, but for our premarital counseling, we even talked to the people about it. The course that we were going through, it was not even a premarital course. It was like a marriage counseling course. So it's hilarious um, because they're asking about stuff in your marriage, and it's like, well, we're not married, so heh. Um, but... They had chapter, like, it's, since we're both Christians, we're, uh, we were going through a Christian premarital counseling uh, program and, or marriage program, Um, and the first one, first two chapters are about, like, your relationship with God, third chapter was about worship, so we're, like, not really talking about, like, real stuff, it seems like, inside the marriage, like, I am fully on board with, like, as a Christian, like, hey, like, let's make sure everyone's on the same page, but... Her, I'm going to fast forward. Anyways, uh, then it was like about husbands, about, uh, then the next chapter was about wives, and then worship. So it was like, we're hitting a lot of, we're covering a lot of bases on the Christian front. Um, and then seventh chapter was about sex, and last chapter was about forgiveness. Oh, it was, uh, one of them was In that order? One of them what was did, communication. What do they mean? What did they talk about with sex? So, with that, a lot of it was more kind of on pornography. Like, as far as abstaining from pornography and not making sex just about, like, a, like, self-pleasing thing, but something that is, like, for each other in that. But, so, this is the hilarious part, though. Did you ask him about the guy getting you a sex swing for your wedding gift? Is that allowed? Uh, no, I thought it was just allowed. Yeah, I think it's a, it's okay if we like uh, help him along the way, you know. As long as he doesn't watch it, so we'll watch it for him, get ideas, and just tell him about it. Yeah, yeah. your piece in the in the, at the on the <laughs> date kind of deal. <laughs> but um, that's mid thrust. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> what? what? Then, he, yeah. then he'll get weirded out if she likes it. Maybe you know you never know. You don't know unless you try it. <laughs> it's one of those things you find out the hard way, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's how Joe found out about the uh, thumb in the butt thing. Yeah, exactly. I didn't think I was gonna like it that much. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna have to really just mark this one explicit. Yeah. Um, but anyways, we're ta- we're going through the chapter on sex, and uh, they both know that my fiance and I are we're virgins, so they're like, all right. Um, how about you guys go outside? The girls will stay in here. Like, uh, and then if you've got anything you want to talk about, the... did you tell them to suck your dick when they told you that? No, we you got up and left. I went outside to talk with the guy, and uh, he's like, "So you got any questions?" I'm like, "Nope." Wait, that's what like. You're not allowed to even talk about sex if you're a virgin. No, no, like no, they were encouraging that, it. Yeah, they, yeah, that's what they're like. It's a married couple who was doing the counseling for us, so they were splitting us up just in case, like it was awkward, so the girls could talk together and the guys could talk together. Oh. So if there's anything where it was like, so what did you guys talk about? What did the guys group talk about? He was mostly talking about stuff that, like, he was giving me some advice or I'm kind thoroughly, of talking about his story and I'm thoroughly so I'm not intrigued. Gonna, like the say, pepper on the nightstand kind of deal or how? Like you say, no. like the way you worded, like he gave you advice. Like, what do you mean? Oh dear God. Like, uh, working on the clit, not just going out. Oh, through. so they're like 
they're literally teaching you how to yeah properly satisfy each other yeah Apparently, that yeah. would be kind of awkward yeah and i i don't know these people that well and i'm also just like cool like i feel like not completely ignorant to the way the world works but you gotta use in between these two fingers that's the trick yeah can't just do one you gotta you know <laughs> i don't think he knew that <laughs> and she if she can take three she's not a virgin no 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 no, no. i'm talking about on the outside <laughs> <laughs> oh, <dear God. laughs> that would be very uncomfortable what oh the whole that conversation whole, yeah the whole scenario well did you ask kendra what she learned Oh yeah, we talked about it. What'd she learn? That's we're gonna keep that private. But it's not like something she did. It's about what the class talked about. So you don't have to. T- you we don't have to go detail what she personally took away from it. Yeah, which is which is that. Yeah, but like, what did they talk about? Like, just that like it's gonna be messy and yeah stuff like, like that. Like, do you mm-hmm. use a hand? Or yeah, use a hand? messy. <laughs> oh yeah, to spit or not to spit. Mm-mm. Lube was highly encouraged. No spit. That's bad. Did they encourage swallowing? <laughs> That's pretty. This is yeah. This is a pretty accurate show. It's not that hard. I've done this so many times. Like, did they? Uh, we did not talk about that. It's a game changer. You need to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have water on the nightstand. Gotta be ready with beverages after cold. Mm-hmm. Maybe a cigarette. You know. Menthol. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, menthols work right. You gotta bite the butt. <laughs> when you bite it, it'll make it louder. Oh, you bite it? Take. What if you bite it in half? Don't bite it in half. <laughs> <laughs> just don't do that. That's Doctor, very, it hurts when I do this. So don't do that. That's very interesting. I might sign up for a marriage class just for week eight, seven. Just for some softcore? <laughs> 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 This is what I do to my wife. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Sir, you got this wrong. This is what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Jen, oh, we should go to we should go to marriage to council. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> dude, this is freaking, let's go. You're right. I'm right. I said, hold on. Now, one last thing. Thumb in the butt. Let me tell you how it goes. Okay. <laughs> But then that's, that's me being you. Then you elaborate. Oh, yeah, yeah. So what you want to do is you want to spit on it first and then sit on it. You know what I mean? But imagine You'll like, spit and sit. But imagine like <laughs> I'm with the guy section and Joe's over there talking to the girls. What? Did they use demonstration <laughs> tools? They did not. Was it six ed? Did they show you how to put on a condom? They did not, no. No photos? No. What? How do you expect? How are you dude? supposed to know about the clitoral hood? They've got they've got scientific. We just so, take the skin and the face off, where it's just muscles and. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I take an online course. <laughs> thoroughly interesting. Well, speaking about that, you're uh, which, back. if you want, I could send you the uh, videos that were on YouTube for your uh, thing, the marriage counseling thing. If you want to listen to it. Or just for week seven. Send it over. We don't even got to talk to him? This is, yeah, this is going to The fun stuff that you're looking for is not going to be in that video. I'm so curious on what they talk about, though. Okay, I'll send Um, it to you. Your bachelor party's coming up, dude. Yeah, it is. This Saturday. Did we get a yay? Oh, no way. That's right. Did we get a yay or nay for the midget stripper? Uh, We got a nay. Yeah, I did talk to... Hardcore? Wait, hold on. I talked to the fiance about it. Well, is she, is she going to be at the house? It's a bachelor no. party. She's not supposed to know. Oh, wait. No, you asked. Oh, yeah, dude. That's not how that works. You fucked. Yeah, you don't ask. That's one of those things. It's just like you do ba- you do parties and you don't ask about it. Wait, hold on. Don't ask. Did don't you tell. specify gender? I did not. No. Ooh. Ooh, that means both you know, are they, an L, though. You guys ever watch Friends? <clears throat> yeah. A little Danny DeVito stripper? Yeah. If we can get Danny DeVito show up. What season is that? I don't know. There was somebody's bachelor at party. And they ordered a stripper. He came in and then he just started crying. Because <laughs> they were mean to him. Yeah. That's hilarious. He can't kill himself though. He's unkillable. Uh, so even though you shouldn't, you should have no idea what's going on in your bachelor party. I know what's going on. I know you are. I know. I said you shouldn't. So what is? What, what should I expect? Um, me and the, grooms, the groomsmen are going to go shooting in the morning. And then we're going to kind of, I don't know. What are, you gonna, what are you guys going to shoot? Uh, AR-15s. 
Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Okay. Handguns, shotguns. My brothers. You go into a desert or go into a specific place? We're going to go to a place that is sanctioned and okay for us to shoot. In Minecraft, okay. Easy yep. ups, tables. If you got them, bring them. It's going to be hot. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in the evening, we're going to go over to my brother's place and uh, probably play poker, have dinner. What's the buy-in? I don't know. Are we doing cash? No rebuy-ins. I don't know. I've been practicing poker. What's the blinds? How often do they change? This is the stuff you should ask my brother, who's the one who's organizing. What kind of food's gonna be there? Pizza and wings. Ooh, okay. No okay. steak. I was yeah, I was a little disappointed in that. What? We're ordering food. Yeah. What what happened to steak? Steak is more for like that's for the, the groom's party, like the night before the wedding. Okay. There's another party the night before the wedding. Am I chipping in money so we can have steak? Is that what's happening? Well, like you can't. Well, like normal. I mean, like normally you, you, talking about you the don't re- go the out. You don't dinner? go out. Yeah, like you hang out with them afterwards because you're not allowed to see each other or sleep in the same. Do do not let me the night before. Like, no, like I no, we no, lived the, re- the rehearsal dinner. You're allowed to see each other. Yeah, it's no, the but day after, after the wedding. You have to, after, but you're not. But you're not supposed to like. Sleep in the same bed the night before the wedding. Yeah. Yeah, but you guys already don't do that, so. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Not yet. Soon. Yep. Do you have a goal? For? How many times a wedding night? Um, yeah, two. <laughs> Who's the second person? <laughs> <laughs> we, we did, uh. She might be mad at me for this. She doesn't like when you guys I talk doing, about this stuff. Are you guys doing a little? You guys, you guys have. I feel like you were might have it like planned out. Like, all right, we're gonna do a little floor play. I go first, then you go, then we'll do it, then we'll do it again. Like, do you have it scheduled? Not for. Oh, the, I guess that would not be, for the wedding night. I guess that wouldn't be terrible. No. We do have. Because you guys are yeah, because you guys have been thinking about that a lot, but hopefully, it's not. Uh, you don't think it's gonna be like, like this badass thing. It's probably gonna be super awkward and weird. Oh yeah, yeah. and it's so. What's the game I, plan? What's your game plan? Are you diving in head first or hand first? Um, you probably should go hand first just to see which what you're working with before you go down there and can't find anything. Probably what I'm going to do. It would be hard not to find it. <laughs> what are you insinuating? Like, even, like, back in the day, like, people made a big deal about, like, oh, make sure it's not her butthole. It's a significant oh, I difference. thought you were talking about finding something else. <laughs> her clitoris? No, the other thing. She just comes out like, you know. <laughs> 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 now that we're married, <laughs> yeah. babe, I have to tell you something. <laughs> Makes it even worse. It's bigger than yours. That's <laughs> he's got a winner, dude. <laughs> That's who's making the real money. You're wearing jeans from now on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, you wanna? Let's see. Abby sends me a lot of TikToks. Let's see which one she. Live. Let's just see which one this is. It's your wife. What my husband would look like if he was funny. Oh, it's just her. That's a lie. That's dumb. She did send me. She did send me an office. Bloop. I hate this. Chair. You ever watch the office bloopers? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Fucking hilarious, dude. Here, let's do a ring around the rosy. Get uh, Thaddeus new chair. That one's probably going to suck, too. Just rip it. You got a lot of chairs. A lot of chairs to choose from here. I wanted to talk about the Bud Light cans, but I should have brought you one. You ever seen the vid- the Bud Light videos, though? No. Like, they're on TikTok. Like, ooh. Bud Light. They're like, I don't know what the big deal is with this whole Bud Light can. And they take a sip. They're like, oh, oh my gosh. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen those videos, yeah. <laughs> We were joking about it today at work. The plumber showed up and uh, stop, stop. I had to go grab some material. I was like, "Hey, is there anything else you guys need?" They're like, is it "Too early to start drinking." I'm like, "As long as it's not Bud Light." <laughs> <laughs> ah, jeez. 
The one time I've ever been in a gay bar, I was brought there. Which one? As a, it was called Brody's in Tucson. Oh, okay. Yeah, pretty bad. Uh, probably a good place for somebody who wants to be there. I did not know what I was getting myself into. I was heavily intoxicated. I actually spent the, the next hour after that trying to run back to the bar we drove from, from to go there. Uh, it was crazy. I got stuck in like a BLM riot in downtown Tucson. It was insane. <laughs> Cops Dude. were there. Helicopter? Nuts. I think there, there's one in Phoenix called Charlie's. It's actually pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do they have Bud Light flags that were pride though? No, I mean, I haven't been there recently. Oh, he hasn't been recently. So everybody's been fucking saying, dude, that Bud Light sponsored a tranny or some shit, dude. And uh, copyright? apparently it makes you gay. It's like it's a 4 l 6 Drinking Six Bud Light, Light for fucking Tranny? years, man. And I don't see how it makes you gay. <laughs> that, yeah, that's your average Bud Light drinker for sure. Stuck the whole oh, bottle was, in his throat. Dang it, that wasn't the one. That was a good one, though. Yeah, there are some good ones. I've been doing this for years. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them, they do it like on a Snapchat filter. So, like, their face isn't in. I don't know what the big deal is. They take a drink and they put it on themselves and it's, it's the, the girl, girl filter. Yeah. Yeah, people are just running away with it, dude. It's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, good times, so dude. Did you see this one? <laughs> Biden sniffing Dylan Mulvaney behind the Bud Light sign. <laughs> oh, uh, man. That's hilarious. What a point we're at in the country's history. All right. Well, now that I've been given plenty of sexual advice for my... Honeymoon, should we uh, get this thing started? Well, I don't think we gave you advice. We just were curious on what was in store. Sure. What you take away from it's up to you. Yeah, do you want advice? I mean, I guess he did, you know, he's been talking about the thumb butt thing for a while. It's a good, (laughs) yeah, it's a good maneuver. But would you recommend that right off the bat? Huh? Yeah, man, because you just put them together and sit on your own thumbs and it's not too bad. It's going to warm up. But then you have nothing to look forward to. Well, it's, it's supposed to warm you up. Do you not need to be warmed up? I need to be warmed up a little bit. To find warmed up. Like two thumbs, you know, at least. Talking about like uh, anal training? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like if you don't have the beads on you, you know, you're like on the move kind of deal. Mm -hmm. You can get one of those sets that have like the small to large. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah. All the good ones do, yeah. Are you te- are you a uh, glass or rubber? Oh, rubber. Yeah. 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 Water based lube. Water based. You know, it'd be funny is that like if that didn't know he was allergic to latex and just ruined his fucking wedding night. <laughs> you should figure that out. <laughs> or even worse, your wife. <laughs> you guys um, should figure that out. That's like, that's actually really smart. <laughs> that's a. That's I a have good a good question. We'll stop talking about it. Have you ever put on a condom? No. Oh, you've never been curious just to see like. You probably should do that before you're ready. Oh, that's the plan. That's definitely the plan. Just so that I don't look like a complete amateur. Take no, no, you, you you put it on before, you know? And then you come <laughs> <laughs> Just going to wear it all day. Just wear it to the... Yeah. <laughs> that episode of South Park. You're not wearing a condom right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know... You should get him for the wedding. Huh. Actually, it wouldn't technically be for him at all. Well, I guess it would be for him. He'd probably, I don't know, they enjoy it equally. Those uh, little Bluetooth devices. <laughs> yeah. Where you, where it's like an app or you have a thing and you can control it just randomly. Uh-huh. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. I'm already thinking about getting him a squat plug. What's a squat plug? It's for when you're working out, dude. You need a little extra support there. <laughs> Wouldn't it fall out when you squat it? It shouldn't. <laughs> I can say I've never put a butt plug in. I don't know if they should. Ah, it's a squat plug. So I'm making oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't gosh. know where this one's making it. All right, well, we should probably get the ball. Anything else you want to talk about? Do you have a rant? No, not for today. Okay. Unless you want me to try and lose my mind on something, but no. right, roll here. All right. Should we edit this episode? One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's gonna be some 
creative. Because you know, if the pack, if this podcast ever takes off, like we can tell people, be like, dude, like go listen to some of the early ones, and yeah. they'll run across this and think it's fucking hilarious. We'll just tell me we're slammered, you know. <laughs> we never did one of those sober. Oh yeah, my brother called me the other day, uh, and he's like, "Hey, uh, you gonna drink at your bachelor party?" I'm like, "No, I don't drink." He's like. Yeah, but it's your bachelor party, and it's not like you're doing it for, like, because you're an alcoholic or anything, you just choose not to. I'm like, yeah, I know. He's like, all I can say is I'm leaning towards your brother right now. Keep going. Leaning towards my brother in what kind of way? Like Squat agree- plug? Agreeing with him. <laughs> you know yeah. what? You don't have to drink, but you can still get drunk, right? You ever heard of butt chugging? I have. Yeah. <laughs> it's really bad for your liver. It's so bad. Yeah, it's like you don't have to... I forget what it's called. It's not called parachuting. Like you don't have to do drugs at your bachelor party. You just put them up your butt. Yeah. Did I tell you guys about earthquaking? We had a question. Are you gonna? Are you not gonna drink at all? Like you're not even gonna have like a group celebratory like shot or even nope. a shot just a cheers. Mm-mm. Nope. I'm gonna spit something in his mouth. That those are good. They taste good. Chew it up first so he doesn't have to do a lot of work. It yeah, you. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant like the alcohol. Oh. That mm-hmm. could work. It's going to run up on you and just... Back. If he runs away, <laughs> we'll use the can cannon. <laughs> uh, All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sledgehammers in the Office podcast, where we celebrate the heavy hitters on the job site and in the office. Today, I'm joined by Joseph Morris. What are we drinking? We were drinking cherry Pepsi. It is gone now, unfortunately, because I'm thirsty. Mason Oxendale. We have the mysterious red Solo cup. With? Red liquid. That's all you need to know. Cool. And then, as always, the Shamrock Farms chocolate milk, whole milk, because it is the best. All right, let's run through some of our numbers real quickly. This is going to be uh, real estate inventory and then some of the building prices for Arizona. Uh, This is going to be the greater Phoenix area that we're focusing in on. So if you guys live in that area, this gives you an idea of uh, what's going on in those markets. If you live outside of those markets, hopefully this is kind of more just a general rule of thumb for what's going on. Active homes right now, 9,744. That is down 1,322 from last month. Closed in the last 30 days, 5,309. From when we checked that roughly a month ago, that's down 125, roughly holding steady, especially since last week. Interest rate, 6.5%, steady from last week. Two by fours, 315, that's the same. Plywood, 1230, roughly the same. The one that is up uh, several dollars is gonna be our half inch, uh, 10 foot copper pipe which is up $4.30 to twenty nine twenty six. So that was something that we talked about in the um, in our trade podcast recently that, um, I see you making notes and it's bothering me. No, um, in our trade podcast where Malika was going over that a lot of the building materials, if it's the two by fours or plywood, they've come back to the price that they were before um, but copper has uh, skyrocketed quite a bit and apparently is... What is... Uh, do you know the reason behind that? Uh, no, I don't. Which, and for early... The original spike, a lot of that was just everything getting out of control with COVID, things that, uh, and the supply chain um, and all that stuff. But um, The downside um, to the Trump tariffs, yeah. But cop, what, do, what do you use for copper piping, especially since a lot of the new builds are going to the uh, plastic stuff? PEX. Yeah. So there are there are some things that are still going to be uh, copper. Um, yeah, but you know, you're not running copper throughout the house, so... Yeah. Which, My limited knowledge is like, that's weird. Why is copper going up? Gas, they right? stop using it. Gas which, for copper, yeah. They, I don't think they 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 use um, uh, steel. They use I think it's like a galvanized black steel for uh, gas. There is a flexible piping that they have for gas too, which it's a lot like PEX that they're doing um, as well. Which so for the copper, it does depend on at a certain point it it does have to transition back to copper because you're not running PEX all the way to your sewer lines. Yeah, the, um, yeah, just so, inside the house, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then 
for remodels and things like that, uh, usually you're going to have, which even I guess they've gotten better at that with PEX, but sometimes it would be for a stub out for uh, like a toilet. You have PEX right up until it's going to stub out of the wall, and that would be a copper transition. So, yes, mm -hmm. we've eliminated a lot of the copper that is needed for um, construction, but at the same time, uh, there's still uh, a use for it. The other thing, too, that we've seen is obviously a lot of the wiring. There's more and more wiring that's going into every house, and so your copper prices uh, are going to really affect the wiring well, prices even, as well. Didn't even think about that, yeah. Yep. Especially with all the new technology coming out. Yep. And with a lot of code, uh, there's increases in the amount of outlets that you need per linear foot on a wall or different things of that nature. Do you right, guys run wire? Sorry to interrupt you. Oh, uh, my garage. The garage band thing is screwing up. I think we're good. We'll find out afterwards. Apparently. Um, I was going to ask a question. Oh, uh, do you guys do? Do you guys run wires? And like as long as they're not like hot wires. Like if somebody wanted to cut holes in the ceiling, put in speakers, or do you just outsource that? Um, I think that falls in the category of low volt. I think a lot of those guys... Oh, you guys can do low vault? Or do you need a low vault guy? Usually, I don't have a ton of experience with low vault. Um, I have quite a bit of experience with low vault. Really? Yeah, I've done it in my past two houses. All right. I guess we know who we're calling. We've got low vault. Yeah. In drywall or outside of drywall? No, you gotta like run it, the drywall crossing down the thing. Hmm. Which I feel like is it's that a not very, that hard. Yeah, is that a bad thing? No. No. But like with low volt, there's so much that you can do with low volt. So they've got the cat six and even now there's fiber and even stuff. There's stuff between cat six and fiber, which to me, it's hilarious. I was talking to what are speaker wires considered? So a lot of that is on the newer stuff is going to be, um, it's going to be run off of like your cat six now. Cause there's but a is that considered low voltage? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, put so the, the nice, I put a ceiling fan thing in once. It made me feel real cool because yeah. I did it. The nice part about low volt too is that it Ooh, doesn't follow the same rubbing. codes as your normal electrical. So you can do certain lights off of low volt wiring um, that still have quite a bit of lumens that they put out. Um, but it doesn't need to have the same uh, restrictions as your normal gotcha. 110. So, yeah. All right, um, numbers seem pretty steady, down 1,300 from last month, but seems roughly the same as last week when we looked at it, so not Inactive. too much change on that. Yeah, I Active is down 1,300. Yeah. Yeah, I track it weekly, and it seems like about two 300. It's go in The past, like, six weeks, it's been going down two 300. Mm -hmm. um, but the crazy thing is, is that the, you know, 1,200, 1,600, 1,100 uh, homes... Brand new, you know, 1,400, probably the average brand new homes coming to list. So it's just like people are listing their homes and then people are still buying them. Mm -hmm. So it's just a, you know, people said a hot market or whatever. It's just, it's a super active market. Yeah. Which is, what do we say all the time? Depends on your situation. Yeah. But... Does this mean that it's going to crash? Probably not in that market. Banks might fail for stock market. Who knows? Oh, well, banks fail. We're all fucked anyways. Yeah. So, not real estate's fault. That's all we care about. All right, Joe. Uh, you were showing me some stuff that you are doing. Um, you posted about it on Instagram with switching out some window handles. So, you want to walk us through... Uh, what was going on in that situation and then what you did? Uh, unfortunate situation. Really good fundamental thing, though. Uh, literally, two screws. You are turning two screws two different directions per handle. Super straightforward. Um, the windows went in. It was a phenomenal system. Arcadia 8200 or something like that. Really great window. But it was over a kitchen countertop where they hadn't done the math on how far the handles were going to come out because typically... Your handles aren't in the center of a window for certain casements. So these people maybe didn't plan ahead or maybe they were going with a different product and they uh, changed something at some point. 
But for whatever reason, they ended up with a faucet directly in the line of uh, the line of travel for these handles. So you couldn't get the windows unlocked all the way because this really, really super cool looking uh, sink faucet was right smack dab in the middle of their uh, their path there. So I got to get some new ones from the manufacturer, chop them down two inches, and even cut them back and clean them up, make them look real nice. Painted them myself even, and uh, took the two screws out on the right side, two screws out on the left side, pulled the old handles out, grabbed the new handles that I cut down, put them into the system, two top, two bottom, we're done. No problem there at all. But uh, yeah, measure twice, cut once. It's magical. Yes. It's a very good feeling when I uh, got to put them on and they looked good. Did you measure twice or three times? I didn't. Uh, do you I ever do you ever measure twice? You know, if you have to get something so perfect, you oh. do it more than twice. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Because there's some things where it's like, uh, for for example, there was a piece of brake metal we were doing up north. It was, you know, it was like thirty five or thirty six square foot across. Like this thing was ten. Did you, did you guys end up doing that piece that you're telling me about? It's a thing. Um, we'll leave it at that for now. It's okay. a thing. But, uh, yeah, so we're looking at the measurements and where it needed to go, where the foundation, you know, we, building process. Things are never perfect. I don't care who says they're going to do what a certain way. You'll never get a perfect result across as many different trades as we needed to have be perfect for this thing to go slap right in the way it was measured. And that's just the nature of the beast. You have to make compromises. You have to make adjustments. And that's the only way you can survive is by adapting. But, uh, yeah, there's just never a perfect situation. Um, but, yeah, that piece of brake metal is going up. That specific piece that was measured, it's going to work. Um, who is going to put it up is a different question. But it's going to get handled. Uh, but, yeah, there's uh, things you have to consider, like the foundation being square, the, the roof line being perfect, depending on where you're doing it exactly. So, you know, it could be as simple as the, uh, the drywall or stucco maybe being out, or if there's any drywall or stucco there to go off of in the first place. But yeah, you're going to pull a lot more measurements than you'd ever think. A lot of people look at it and they're like, oh, like on paper, this is really straightforward. But yeah, two-dimensional in CAD, everything's one solid line. It does look really simple and straightforward. But when you get out there and you find out things are not as perfect as they are two-dimensionally, it gets complicated quick. Yeah, so which the more hands you have on something, the more you find out where people had to be creative to get stuff done. And every time someone has to be creative to get something done, that affects the guy downstream. At the of, very end, doing punch list. Yep, that is like, okay, what the hell did you guys do to get this? Yep to where it is right now the great part too is having somebody who's usually living in the home looking at you like do you know what you're doing it's like a hundred percent do i know what i'm doing but i'm trying not to throw like three people under the bus i'm just trying to make sure this gets done well and make sure you're happy with it and uh maybe at some point i talk to some people about why things got done a certain way and usually you know 99 percent of the time those people have a good reason for the reason for the way things went that's uh that's a good thing. It's a good feeling when, you know, they can look at you and honestly say, like, yeah, there was problems. You're not the only one. It's like, okay, cool. Yeah. But that's part of the adapting thing, you know. you got to be able to look at situations and go, yeah, this sucks. It's not fun. No one's enjoying this, but it needs to get done. Because the same person who may have put you in that position had the same thing to deal with because the guy behind them. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, we're just building houses. Yeah, exactly. It's wooden yeah. drywall. Yeah. We've been doing a lot of projects recently. Yeah. There's a, was it Wednesday of last week? We were out till 9 p.m. working. That was my second 15-hour shift in a week, you know, in a seven, or a five-day span. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, knocking out some doors. We've had a lot of work recently. We've had doors. We've had block wall that we filled in we've had a lot of miter saw action a lot of miter saw action we've had that backsplash you did tile backsplash going on we've got all kinds of stuff too that's the cool part where it's just huge variety of things that people are asking for you're running eating cheeseburgers every night some days we're getting indian some days we're getting mexican <laughs> Ooh, i love me some mexican oh god gotta yeah. 
<laughs> Which Ow. I think we're we're just about booked into July. Busy beavers. Yeah. I wanna Is that where I'm being pushed out to? We'll try and get you in there before that. I think yours There's is gonna no be rush. easier and shouldn't be too bad, so we'll see what we can do. The new build's having the issue? No, 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 he wants to get that short door in, and then the, uh, um, there's a the secret decorative door. piece. Oh, yeah, the, um, little mudroom thing. Oh, there's a lady that I was supposed to get her a drawing for a secret door, but she just wants me to draw it, so. Just a rectangle picture with a door handle. <laughs> no, it, she wanted a custom furniture piece, and. I want my door, though, to be where it just looks all nice, but it's a push open. Would be hidden. Oh yeah, those uh, those uh, tension magnets, spring depressed mm -hmm. or whatever. We could do that, but you're not gonna want to pay for that. I'll pay anything. <laughs> your bill just got more expensive. Yeah, I'll just push back your bill like you did my project. No. <laughs> Burn. <laughs> We're getting hosed. Oh man. Yeah, because we've got. <clears throat> the project we did the doors on, the guy wants us to go and baseboard the entire house. So, I'm trying not to use the trim nailer in a block this time. <laughs> that was a bad day. I was getting mad at that thing. Uh, yeah, he comes up to me. He's like, "Hey, um, the 16 gauge nailer is not working. I think we have to throw it away." <laughs> I was about to boot that thing. I was about to go for a ride into it's the like pool. Every single nail will not go into that wall. The messed up part was it was happening on the door before that too, not on that wall. Yeah. Which... I kind of love interior doors, but I kind of hate interior doors. I think the part we were hating about that was the nail, <clears throat> the nailers were starting to go out on us, and that was annoying. And shimming up the bottoms of the doors. Yeah, that too. That sucked. Yeah, we'll go through quite a bit to... Uh, Get crap done at people's house, though. Yeah, we will. We're good at it. Apparently. At least they keep paying us. And they keep telling their friends about us, so. And they keep wanting to pay. They want to pay us. Yeah. It's cool. Hey, do you know anyone I can give money to? <laughs> I think I was tracking all the customers that we've worked for. <clears throat> and I'm trying to think all but... One was has given us a referral, and the one that hasn't, he was a referral from someone else. Word is the doors we did out in Avondale. That was a while back. Yeah. Which, yeah. I don't know. That's that's something I've been thinking about as far as just like I'm very proud that everyone that we've been working with, they're referring us to other people or they are a referral from someone else just because it means like okay we're doing something right um but that does make me like there's that one guy out there where i'm like huh like what did we miss on that one because i don't like i got to know the family really well like you were there we got to know him pretty well and everything came out really nice so hmm. it is what it is but that's, that has been something that I've been thinking about as far as really trying to make sure that we deliver to people where it's like, hey, we want them to be telling their friends. Like we talked about last week, just the compounding advertising effect of people telling people. Word of mouth is good. Yeah. Probably the best form of advertisement. Yeah. Which you look at, this goes back to how we've talked about the trades. Like how many people in the trades on these, uh, in the smaller businesses and even some of the larger businesses, they do zero marketing there's almost nothing they do it's all built on word of mouth and you've got these guys who've been there for like 30 40 years and it's like hey how'd you get going and all this stuff it's like we've got instagram ads that you can run it's like no just someone told someone else and someone told someone else so i just kept showing up it's like what the but once you get the database and then you start pushing that shit yeah which they know who you are one of the things uh, I'm helping out with the general contractor that I work for is 
we're doing like a video progression through a project that I'm managing right now. And we're linking that to a QR code that's going on flyers, that's going out to the entire neighborhood, stuff like that. So if people want, they can follow along with the project and the progress that we're making on it. So hopefully we can start picking up neighbors for um, other projects. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right, something we talked about before the podcast was um, a lot of what we want to do on here is talk about tangible things, whether that's in construction, uh, whether that's in real estate. There's a lot of podcasts where they talk about it's about relationships and getting you fired up because you need to work hard. And, but um, I think there is a big missing part of just some of the tangible stuff where it's like, hey, can someone kind of walk me through what they're looking at when they're analyzing a situation or kind of give me us a how to. So I um, want to take a couple minutes for Mason to run through uh, just with his eyes looking at a house for um, a quick analysis of what the, what he would be looking at for someone if they said, hey, we're looking to sell a house. And the house that we chose <clears throat> is a neighbor uh, of mine right now. This is not a solicitation for a client's business. They are under contract. This is just observations. And the only reason why we chose this house is because uh, they bought it a year ago. They're selling it now. Uh, so we wanted to kind of break down some of the numbers, what that looks like uh, price-wise, what they're getting into in regards to fees, things of that nature. So we gave this to Mason literally uh, about an hour and 10 minutes ago. I haven't even looked at the pictures yet. So... A lot of this is going to be probably just number analysis and kind of breaking down uh, what he's looking at. But um, if someone wants to go, do we want to tell people the address? No. No? Okay. You can just tell them it's where it's at. Like, uh... It's in Phoenix off of 35th Avenue and Greenway. Um, and if you really want to, you can find it on Zillow. Good for you. Let's see. Last... Uh, Currently, it is under contract, accepting backup offers, and will be, let's see, it is being listed by REMAX, Fine Properties, Shelly T. Berry, and Tony Champy. Um, so, just looking at public records, this is what we're going to be looking at. Um, it was bought in March 2022. It was uh, bought for a price of $325,000 with $0 down uh, with a VA loan. All of this is public record. We are not disclosing anything that is private information. This is things that as realtors, we can look up very quickly. It is readily available to us. So we're not, um, we're not disclosing any information that we shouldn't be is what I'm trying to get at. So 325, it was bought for last year. Currently it is uh, the list price that they had on the MLS. We, we're not exactly sure where it went under contract, but the list price is $355,000. That gives us a $30,000 difference in one year. So Mason, when you're looking at this, uh, if you've got the next door neighbor who's talking to you and saying, hey, I'm in an identical situation, very similar house. Um, I saw that my neighbors are selling. Maybe I want to sell as well. Can you walk me through some of the numbers in regards to what I can expect. I'm seeing they sold, they bought at 325, selling at 355, so that's a $30,000 difference. Do I get to walk away with $30,000? Can you explain this to me? Yes, I can. Sorry, I'll explain in a minute. Repeat your question. <laughs> so if we have a neighbor that is in almost an identical house almost an identical situation. They're coming to you and saying, hey, uh, I see my neighbor, they, they're they listing the house at 355. They've got a contract. We don't know exactly where it is, but they bought it at 325. So it looks like they're gonna walk away with $30,000 um, from, uh, there's a $30,000 difference in those two numbers gotcha. right there. Do I walk away with $30,000 or what am I looking at? Can you explain this to me? How do the numbers all break down on this? <clears throat> so 325, right? That's mm -hmm. what they bought at. They got a VA loan. So the first thing I want to look up is, you know, what's the, what is my future clients? What's their walk away number? After everything's paid, fees, everything, house is sold, 
what is the money in their pocket going to be broken away? So they got a VA loan. They put zero down. They took advantage of the VA loan, so they have a loan for three twenty-five. So well, right off the bat, VA loans, um, they most likely they have to pay a one percent origination fee on it. So that is three thousand two hundred and fifty dollars right there. Um, and then you know, as the realtor, I front the cost for pictures, all that. They they don't pay for that kind of stuff. Well, they do because they pay me for it. But uh, so let's even go on the small side. So a lot of homes right now, because of the active market, are selling. People are listing their homes for you know commission wise total five percent. So two and a half to the buyer, two and a half to the selling agent. So we'll go at five percent. Plus, um, which in this case it is a three percent buyer broker, but even let's say maybe the agent knows them and they're going to do it at discounted two percent. We're just going to say it's five percent. Five percent total, yeah. Um, and then the closing cost for the buyer, the seller side, is significantly less than a buyer. You know, maybe pay extra in taxes. So, just for the sake of numbers, we'll do like five. So. Title, sure, you know, closing costs plus realtor fees. Let's just say five and a half percent total. So we take three twenty-five thousand times five and a half. Do you do three fifty-five? No, three twenty-five. Why are we doing three twenty-five? Oh yeah, three fifty-five. Sorry. Times five point five percent. I did that wrong. <laughs> Equals nineteen thousand five twenty five. Um, so that is going to be their fees for selling, for getting the home sold, pictures, all that kind of stuff. Uh, bring buy, bring buyers, um, and then so you take that number plus you know, because I want to take in consideration like what they had to pay to get into it since it was so close. So they also paid had to pay a one percent origination fee. Which is three twenty five, or three thousand two hundred fifty. So you add that together, you get a total of twenty two thousand seven hundred and change. So you take that number, and so if they actually get an offer at three fifty five, which is the thirty thousand, so you subtract that number from thirty thousand, and you get their walk away number. Now this is only if. They get their asking price, and the seller doesn't need any concessions. Which there's a lot of houses right now getting concessions. Yeah, I mean we want to throw that in three fifty five full price plus one percent concessions. That's another three fifty five plus twenty two. And I always like to shy on the caution of you know to tell them you know uh, prepare for the worst, and then they're. You know, nice. So even sometimes I'll even put in, usually I put in about a thousand bucks for, you know, repair costs if they got to fix a couple little things and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and then that's also not even mentioning if they have to fix anything. Mm -hmm. So now you're at 26,325. And you subtract that by 30,000. And you get the client's potential walk away number for $3,600. Three thousand six hundred. That was Sounds loud. Like the police are showing up. Three thousand six hundred and seventy-five dollars. Now, being that it's the government, and they like to take money wherever they get the opportunity, because it's a VA loan, is there any sort of hit that the seller is going to take on that? Well, I looked up here. It is their primary residence. Mm -hmm. So, as a single person, you can profit up to two hundred fifty thousand without having to pay capital gains tax. If you're married, five hundred. But. There's a stipulation with that. With? That oh, the two-year It rule. has to be your primary residence for at least two of the last five years. Kind of like FHA loans, right? Or FHA. That's going to be for all of them, yeah. Got it. All right, so all the rules apply. There's no uh, get-out-of-jail-free card here, is what I'm hearing. It's just a better rate for uh, vets. But this is the crazy thing. This is what I... So, this, so like... In this scenario, if they wanted to sell their house, I ask more questions. Why? What's going on? Why do you want to sell it? Like, oh, we can make this much money. I explain to them that and once they start seeing numbers, they're going to be like, it doesn't make sense to move. There has to be something else why they're going to move. You know, 
And if they have to, depending on their timeline, I might even just shoot a little higher, try to get them as much money as possible, you know, and just slowly drop the price and whatnot. But they might need to move fast. I mean, it's been on the market for a month. But this is the this is what I just don't get from looking at this house. So I can look at the past pictures. I went to the previous listing back in 22. Here, I want I want you real time. I want you to look at this. Okay. Right. So can, so you, can you throw this on the screen? I don't know how to do that. So we got a house with a room in it, some windows. Like screen mirroring. You're on the Wi-Fi, right? Oh, I'm on the booster. Okay. Now go back to screen mirroring. Where is it? Let me do it. Home theater. Blocking you. You're being blocked, son. No, it's on. Yeah, on the black sheep. The it's all that traffic, dude. It's all that eastbound traffic. Oh, Sport shit. mode is deactivated. That's weird. This is what we should do for any time we talk about it. Here, I'll throw it up on the. Okay. All right, you guys start looking through it. I'll okay, yeah, I want to show you. So this is. Are we looking at the previous ones or yeah, the current ones? Yeah, the, the the last listing. So, 2022. That roof, uh, that paint on the ceiling looks like shit. Okay, so definitely, so take a look at like upgrades. Don't necessarily look at they, what they have. Just look what they potentially are missing. So that looks it looks like freaking wood, but it's actually yeah. tile. It looks like plywood. It looks like straight it's tile. Plywood. Yeah, it's they got they put some nice flooring in. I don't know, vinyl. Yeah, the windows look new. The door, the kitchen's like this. Backsplash. Weird you know, step in the middle of the house for no reason. Yeah, exactly. Got the doggy door, newer carpet, classic open door home. Whoops, what did I say that? A bathroom. Ooh, old, it's a whole way, there's a little bench you can sit down in there. Yep, an old upgrade tile, but it is technically tile, but it's just, you know, standard everything, new mirrors. Where's the other bathroom? Okay, I'm liking that tile work in the bathroom. That looks pretty sweet. Right, keep going over. A little so swank. A little bit yeah. of swank. What what number are you keep on? Keep going. Um, 82. 18. Yeah, yeah. so 18, that's one of the bathrooms. The next one. Same bathroom. You keep going. You got to the backyard. It's you know nothing in there. New tree to though. To the right, it looks like they have a little built-in barbecue, which is cool. Mm. Uh, the front yard is about normal, newly painted. But then you're back to here. All right, now Thaddeus, I'll let you do the click. Now Ooh, go, solar. We got solar. Yeah. Now go to the listing on how the house is now. Okay, real quickly, and this is just because, like I said, it's one of my neighbors. When it was for sale. I ended up going over there and taking a look through it. So um, that was going to be my first question: is well, with it be, with so it the, being, so there are a lot, a lot of upgrades, way more than thirty thousand. That's what I was going to get your guys' opinion on. This is where so being, being in it. This is one of the houses. The um, pictures lied to you. Wait, hold on, check it out. Count those ceiling fans real quick. That's they did a wall delete. All right, but anyways, go to the next one so we can real see quick. the difference. Okay, real quick though. See this? That's an issue with the drywall. There are issues with trim. The cabinet, they look good. A lot of these were kind of optical illusions because you got in there and the house looked janky. The oh yeah, but no, but vinyl floor. But have you been in it since they listed it? This when it was this one, yes. Because now let's look at the current okay. pictures. Because last last thing real quickly on this house for the showers they look nice and you can kind of see it on this photo back here it's off in the corner so most people aren't going to catch it the only reason why i know about it is because i was in there and I actually looked at it the shower drain is recessed almost three quarters of an inch below the tile which oh. is not supposed is not how it's supposed to be there's huge caulking lines in the other shower things of that nature so they got big cock in the shower yeah, so that was one of the things where that one took a very long time to sell from the iBuyer, one based on the price yeah. for the market at that time, and then two also based on the finishes that were inside yeah, of it. Yeah, so this is, they must have a reason, a specific reason, and willing to lose money on this house. And because just look at the pictures and what's been done to it in under a year or a little over a year. 
So the grass is there. They got grass. You got flowers. The rocks, you know, everything's raked. Landscape is exactly the same. Boom. So there, look at the wall right there. Oh, that's the brick wall, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, that's the brick wall, but definitely staged very nicely, although they forgot to shut their uh, fan off for pictures. They like dead animals. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, see, and there's a big difference staged, even though it's not staged, they probably still live here. But look at those countertops. Look at the... Uh, they put the little, what is that called? Stools? Island. No, but the, the island too, but... Uh, the butcher block countertop? No, yeah, but underneath that. The, the siding. Shellac stuff, not shellac. Shiplap. The shiplap. Oh, yeah, shiplap. And then they also got the borders on the outside, yep. the white stuff. What are those called? Wainscoting? Mm-hmm. Different backsplash? It looks like they really redid that. I mean, look at that. They don't have a janky fan. They got that cool-ass light thing right there. Both of them. Mm-hmm. Upgraded appliances, sink. They look at that. They even they even match the trim of that hallway door to the countertops. Mm -hmm. Recessed lighting's in there now. They got the uh, the nipple light. <laughs> the nipple, yeah, big areola. Mm -hmm. They retrimmed that uh, that wall cut up. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, be honest with you. So you don't, I, you don't have the other one hooked up. I think they replaced the carpet because it was gray. Open door always puts gray carpet in, and this looks like the shade of brown. Could be the lighting, but I don't know. Much Washer and dryer room. They didn't have pictures of it. There's one of the bathrooms. That's new. Yes, I like there the glaze. There was no tub before. Nope. It was the uh, the uh, well reptile two room. Now we're oh reptile slash comic. Eh. You lose me on the left, catch me on the right. I'm lost in the middle. And while I do it, I'll play some music on the piano or yeah. keyboard. Traumatize some lizards. Mm -hmm. Like this, there's a those are new. Those are new doors. You would say that window and door guy. Very nice. There's your blue bathroom. No, that's the other one. That's the shower. It looks like yeah, the tub they one. Out the floor. Yeah, that the one with the tub is the one that had the recessed. Mm -hmm, the that's probably quarters. why they put a tub yeah. in, anyways. They've got this. They got that really simple that's what, like drop in shower. Pan. Yeah, this is more modern tile. Same countertop, same counter, same mirror because that was all nice. All the hardware on the. They put a pond back there for all their lizards. <laughs> yeah, you gotta have a lizard pond. This is the other thing I don't see. Look, they have grass. Better and photos of that grill. This is what I don't get. Like, whoever saw... Oh, because it was open door. That's why. Like, I saw this built-in thing barely on the side of the other pictures. Like, they didn't even advertise this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's sweet. I, just, know, so, I know that when I had looked at this previously, there were a couple of areas out here that needed repair. But if they went through their house and repaired some things, Okay, it construction guy. No, no, like there. So the countertop, it's tiles. There was stuff that was like broken or chipped off, mm -hmm. and so it was just like you can You looked at it and you're like, eh. Like you wouldn't almost want to put your arms on it just because you wouldn't want to like cut yourself or it would just be uncomfortable. So, like what I'm saying is, with what the work that they've done to the house, yeah. it wouldn't surprise me if they've done a couple upgrades to the outside uh, barbecue area as well. So what do you like based off those two pictures? Like, give me a ballpark. It doesn't mean. Of what it probably cost to fix that stuff up. Appliances, countertop, trim, some doors, wainscoting. That's going to be thousands of dollars. Yeah, we're like 15, 20 range, I think. Uh, yeah. Retiling both bathrooms, putting in a tub. <clears throat> 15, 20, yeah. I think 15, 20 on the low end. Wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, so if, like, materials easy I, to get... I did see a rebath truck out there one day, so that might mean that they didn't do it all themselves either. So you are looking at they sunk some money into it as well. I know, but let's just, like, yeah. They're, I'm, I'm so curious now. You, you want, should, you should you want see the neighbors thing? and ask them. Yeah, you know, the big thing about this one, dude? Mm-hmm. Parking's horrendous. The park? Parking. Oh, yeah, I've been there. Like... I don't know if they have a garage out back house? house. Do they have a garage out back? To your parents' house. Really? Yeah, I met you there so I could get your truck. Uh, I got yeah. the cooler. Yeah, forget about that. Um, yeah, they've got the parking in the alleyway in the back. They've got two spaces. So hear me out. Is there a way you can go to one of the photos? Uh, they go to the second photo over. So hear me out. Knock out that stupid little fence. Get rid of all that rock on the right side. 
get some kind of permit from the city to put a curb where that little white wall is on the right side blocking that, knock that wall down, hey, congratulations, like driveway. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't they? There's so much know. room for activities. Our, one of our neighbors did that. That's four Miatas, dude. Which, okay, before, we, before we get too far off base, um, let's go back through our numbers real quickly. So we started with, if that's the purchase price that they got, we have realtors fees that it is common in the industry. We're not saying that it's price fixed by us or anyone else, but it is not the uncommon. Going, the going rate. Which there's not, for legal reasons, it's not even the going rate. There's a lot of people that charge 5% well, is what I, we'll say. Yeah. I guess when somebody says going rate, I Did think you see it the seems NAR? more flexible. Did you see the NAR email that came out recently? No, I don't We had an email that, or we had an article that came out that said, like, these couple little words, this is what we meant, that's not, like, it was stupid. Anyways, one of the common charges by realtors is going to be a 5% charge, which is going to be um, over $17,000 in commissions. Mason broke down for us. It's going to be half a percent of the purchase price. Which is probably even overshooting it. But for closing costs, but we want to make sure, like you significantly said. Significantly overshooting, but like so that might incorporate any added repairs, but that looks nice that you might have to do. If there's $1,000 of stuff that they ask for, depending on... It could be, hey, can we get the AC tuned up or can we get this fixed, whatever it is. Um, we have, what else do we have on that list? Yeah, we just have the, I like to, you know, since it was such a short turnaround, what did you spend to get it? Yep. So they had to spend the 1% on 325, so the 1% origination fee, closing costs, which include realtor fees, and then any extra buffer, you know, a $1,000 buffer for mm Mm-hmm. So, uh, and then we, as Joe mentioned, taxes as well. So well, I, that's included in the, uh, no, no, like capital gains tax. Since it was bought and sold within two years, they are going to pay capital gains tax. But if our numbers are correct, we're looking at less than $4,000 that they would be paying capital gains tax on, which I believe in this case would be, they're going to break even, which would fall in line with whatever their tax bracket is. So even if they're getting charged 25%, you're going to be losing a grand off of that. You're looking at $3,000 walk away cost. And then, like we said, with Mason's analysis of that, if you've put several thousand dollars into the house, uh, it does seem that even with all of that, you're coming up with a negative balance uh, on that sale. So um, we hope that <clears throat> for those sellers, everything closes well with that transaction. Oh, the other thing we didn't mention was the potential for... Um, uh, what is that? The concession, seller's concessions. So that's going to play into it as well. Um, and <clears throat> sorry about that. The max seller concessions that you can get on a house is 3%. That's not common. 1% to 2% is kind of where the market seems to be negotiating at right now for the most part. Usually it's going to be 1%. So that's another uh, 3500 off the top right there. So with all of that, that's stuff to take into consideration when you're looking at your house. Um, the good news for you might be that if you've been in your house for quite a long time, uh, those numbers look a lot different. That uh, you're not going to be, you might not be paying capital gains taxes on that. First of all, you're going to still have your realtor's fees. But if you have had a lot of appreciation, if you bought your house ten years ago, you've seen a lot of appreciation. You've been paying your mortgage for a while. You're going to have. <clears throat> more than zero equity in your house. So that gives you a good situation where, yes, you're going to be paying for, uh, you're going to be paying uh, tens of thousands of dollars to get all of this stuff wrapped up, but there might be hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equity. Well, I was so, you say, had me second guessing myself, but my original thought was right. VA loans does not have a timetable on when you are allowed to sell. Mm -hmm. but we're talking about the taxes With, right yeah but we alone do not have any prepayment or pre-sell uh penalties if you're considering selling your home although they do advise to wait until you have enough equity in the home yeah which and i think there are exemptions if it is a VA, there's a we have VA loans or if you're in the military and you're active if they've restationed you i'm pretty sure there's certain uh waivers for all of that stuff but that'd be something to talk to a lender about and get all this yeah and if you are military and want to utilize a va loan definitely find somebody who has worked with va loans before you know not just somebody anybody 
I mean, they don't have to be. What's that one place? USSA or whatever. Mm -hmm. Where like, they're like, they're branded. Like, that's just their brand. It's not like they only do VA loans and kind of stuff like that. But anyways, find a lender that knows it because there's a lot of different things that you can do with it. Good and bad. Yep. Uh, The other thing too I noticed on here, I don't know. Like, I'm so cute. Like, 355 is low. Not for that neighborhood. That's Dude, appreciated a lot. Three fifty five. There's one that sold here for three ninety one. That wasn't even close to as nice. Slightly larger square feet. Square footage. Of square feet. I don't know if that's real or not. Square feet. But anyways, yeah. yeah. Just to the naked eye. Special guest. Who is it? It's the fiance. Oh, we were just talking about her. You guys still going? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> hole in one right now. You what? Hole in one right now. Let's try. <laughs> Let's see. So, we, there's been a lot of appreciation in this neighborhood for sure. So, oh, well, yeah, every neighborhood. Yeah. yeah. It's just been crazy watching it go from you like. Saw, you saw how much I sold my house for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was. That was close. That was we, close. we need to tell that story. Speaking next of open time. door. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll lead the podcast with that. Next yeah. time, oh, and then I've been talking about having guests, and I keep like remembering on Saturday to like shoot someone text or. I know you were grilling our ass about, dude. We fucking want you here, for guests. Yeah, and yet you just keep not booking them. Yeah, so uh, I sent texts to people before the podcast, so I'm he trying did? to get at least the ball rolling. Okay, so well, we'll see what happens. As Thaddeus learned in the uh, marriage counseling, that when the <laughs> wifey shows up, you need to leave right away. <laughs> <laughs> all right With i think that said i think this is going to be our longest podcast that we've done no way really i mean wait what time is it 801 oh my gosh, no way go, yeah you were thinking about editing this one because yeah you had two reasons yeah anyway we end the podcast we can guys where can they find you uh instagram uh, new new Instagram actually. Finally, door, door dude jpeg because I'm not creative. Uh, I'm showing ca- I'm showcasing a little bit more on the construction side and some stuff I'm seeing. I'm trying to do daily posts. Nothing fantastic unless you know what you're looking at. Um, working on camera work, so bear with me if you do follow because it will get better. Mason uh, at Mason Oxendale on Instagram. If you want to follow somebody that's a badass, do it. Have you posted something since last week? Yes. Yeah, go check it out. What'd you post? Go check it out. All right. I can't tell you because then I won't get a click. Well, we've all been talking about doing things on social media, being more active. I've been posting some of the construction stuff as well. So we're finally making good on our promises at Saito underscore buildings, where you can see what we're doing in construction, all that good stuff. So until next time, I hope your hammer stays accurate, your Wi-Fi fast, and your work blessed. See everybody. <laughs> I have my headphones turned down. That was way too loud.